Made for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener mm, discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. And this is Love Line. I am Dr. Drew. He is Adam Carolla. He is late this evening, as he will be much of the week, because he is, uh, I guess they call it co hosting over at Jimmy Kimmel. And uh, I'm sure he will call in on his way down to the studio here tonight. But it's a great blessing upon me that I'm here. We can get through some calls. And so let's. Uh, He's a big boy. And we, of course, have. Thank you, Anderson. We have the virtual Adam. So you won't even know that Adam's not here, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. He's a big boy. <laughs> okay. You got anything what else are you going to do? Okay, thank you. All right, here we go. This is uh, Becky, who is. Uh, well, no, why can't I call these things out? There you go. Becky is 23. Becky? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Not much. <laughs> um, I'm kind of wondering what besides an STD could cause a slight smell in well, my vagina. It, Nobody it, wants to hear it! Yeah, I'm not sure they do. However, it, it almost without exception is an infection, and it isn't necessarily even an STD. It can just be a bacterial overgrowth. So, and it's something that doctors can treat with creams. It's very simple, not a big deal. It is something you and your boyfriend or husband, whoever, could p pass back and forth. But you ought to get this evaluated. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes it needs an oral antibiotic. There's something called trichomonas that isn't could as Could it easy. be caused by depression medication? Um, yes and no. I mean, almost anything can cause the the sort of bacteria down there to get out of control and alter its balance and whatnot. But usually it's an infection. Usually it's something that's passed back and forth. But it's not sort of a formal STD. It's not a classic STD. No. All right? Okay, thank you. All right, good luck there. All right, let's talk to Julie, 16. Julie? Yeah. Hi, what's going on? Yeah, um, you want to, yeah. Um, see, like, well, yeah. I'll be masturbating in the shower, right? You'll be masturbating. Wait, 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 slow down. You'll hey, it takes all kinds. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Adam. You'll be masturbating in the shower. Yeah, and about an hour... Later, yeah, I'll be I'll be like coming in the bathroom, or the okay. shower, You're and showering. then about an hour later. Slow down. Yeah. And about an hour later, I'll be I'll start coming in. Right. And Good times. Like, and what? And then like I started I stopped, like mm -hmm. for about a month or two I stopped uh, masturbating, and it's I was still coming for no reason. Well, there's a couple possibilities. Um, one is that if you've sort of stimulated yourself vigorously, there can be kind of Aftershocks that go on for a while afterwards. That's a pretty common thing. Good times. Also, there's a syndrome of continuous sexual arousal that sometimes women get, and they, they describe it as very unpleasant. I know men have a hard time understanding the possibility that continued orgasm would be something unpleasant, but it gets very aggravating sometimes. And mm -hmm. they don't really know exactly what causes this. Are you on any medication? Mm -mm. Okay. No. Does it, are you still having this problem? Yeah. Even now, you're still doing this? Yeah. How often do you have orgasms? Um, I don't know, like, um, probably like every 20, 20, maybe 30 minutes. Good times. Wow. Ann, are you on there? I, you know, the I want to get, I have a, a big article on this in my little black uh, folder of articles and stuff. Can you hold on a second, Julie? We're going to talk to you more, okay? Yeah, okay. I'm sure Adam will want to talk to you because he actually wasn't even clear. I I brought in an article on this syndrome one night and he was like, sort of didn't didn't believe it was possible. So, let's talk to Jessica in the meantime. She's 18. Jessica? Hello. And, hang on, Jessica. And to uh, Tara, don't call me Tara, goddammit. And Brian, don't hang up on Julie. I want to talk to her some more. Go ahead, Jessica. Okay, I have a problem. I'm not very confident with my body because of my boobs, because no, my good. nipples are really, like, a lot bigger than most people's, I would say. But... I was wondering if you like there's such thing as like a nipple reduction or something. Not that I'm aware of, but like, uh, I'm I, sorry. I just, um, I it's like doesn't I'm not confident like taking my shirt off during sex and like I wanted to be a stripper and like so, I don't know just dance no, or whatever, that, but I can't do that because I'm not confident enough to take off my shirt. Well, let, let's talk about this a little bit. First of all, guys don't mind this at all. What you have, right? In fact, a lot of well, guys like this. I, I assume they do. I just, I'm too, I'm too worried to take You're off. Too like, worried about. It. Do you yeah. have, do you have normal relationships? You're able to have a boyfriend, that kind of thing. Um, uh, not really. It's like That's... I find reasons to make it not work. I guess. Right. So what happened? You're growing up. Nothing. <laughs> well, something must happen. You want to be well, a stripper? I mean, <laughs> uh, when I was younger, my babysitter had molested us, and 
Okay. Was, but except for, except for that, though. But, like, except, I don't remember that. All right, except for that, nothing. Nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. Perfectly normal. Right. Perfectly. Yeah, except for that. That's huge, Jessica. That's a, that's a giant, giant issue, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Those kinds of traumas in childhood are the things that lead to impulses like wanting to be a stripper, having issues with your sexual or your orientation and identity, being uncomfortable in intimate relationships. Do you go through periods of time where you're sort of hypersexual? Yeah. Okay. And then periods of time where you're shut down completely? Yeah. Yeah, and that, that sort of bipolar quality, that on again, off again, is also part of this trauma stuff. So why don't you deal with that instead of, uh, instead of acting out on it? And worrying about your nipples because that is not going to cure this well, problem. I, don't, I just I don't know. I mean, I've seen therapists before, but I kind of yeah. don't follow through because right. it seems okay. like they don't help me. And All right. Well, I don't if you don't, like if I you don't, problem. You have a big problem, and if you don't stay with it for years, you're going to continue to have a big problem. Yeah. Just visiting somebody for a couple of sessions is going to do absolutely nothing. But there's no such thing as like a nipple reduction or anything like that. Like, there's no such thing because I don't know. I would probably feel more confident. Maybe that's not really what it is. That's right. That's not what it is. Okay. Because guys like that, I'm sure you're fine. Well, the problem you. is you in intimate relationships, and that's not going to yeah. get better by reducing your areola. Okay, it really isn't. All right? All righty. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Yeah. People are, what, what is this? You, 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 you can't be satisfied unless reality conforms with what you want. And if reality doesn't conform, whoever tells you what reality is, is at fault. Come on. Hey, it takes all kinds. It does. I need to hear more from Adam Anderson. Alyssa, 18. Hi. Um, I was wondering if smoking cigarettes can alter the size of your breath. What like are you going to do? Like make them smaller? Yeah, like if you smoke before you're fully developed or something. Um, well, it affects oxygen delivery and certain enzymatic function, the peripheral organs, and it makes you lose weight, and that can reduce your breath size. But... Ultimately, like, full Ultimately, I'm, I'm not aware of it affecting development, per se, development really? of the breast. Why would it matter? Uh, I was just wondering, because um, I smoked when I was, like, 15, and now I'm 18, and I was just wondering if that had anything to do with, like... co core. And what's happening now with you? Um, nothing. I was just wondering if that had anything to do with the size of my breast. So. And what's wrong with the size of your breast? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering if that had something to do with it. Somebody told me that smoking cigarettes can alter that. Like they would be bigger if you didn't smoke smaller. cigarettes when you're fifteen. Smaller. They'd be they'd be smaller yeah. if you didn't if you didn't smoke yeah. cigarettes. No, so if I did. They'd be smaller. If I did when I was younger, growing up. Oh, you didn't. You understand smoke why I hate our callers, even the ones that've yeah. been right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I begin to understand that. Okay, Tiffany, twenty. Hello. Tiffany. Hi, what's going on? Hi, um, I'm four and a half months pregnant, and I um, there's two possible fathers, and I just was wondering if it's possible to get um, a DNA test before the baby is born. It's probably possible, but no one's gonna, it would put the pregnancy at some risk, and no one would do it. Okay. Uh, why do you Why do you need it before? I, I just, I mean, it would just be easier to know, you know, I mean, who who the father is. Right. Well, you, it's, and it's worth putting the pregnancy at risk? No. Okay? Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, great calls tonight. This is a Melanie, 24. Hi. Hi, Melanie. Uh, I have a question. Um, typically, after sex, I go to the restroom and expel the uh, semen from my vagina. And a couple of times last week, I, I failed just a, just to do that. Such a command, command of language. This is such a delightful, delightful. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You right expel the, the semen. Um, yes. So yeah. I was wondering if by not doing that, that could cause a bladder infection. No. No, because plenty is left behind anyway, right? Uh, there's there's typically some left behind, but I I try to expel as much as possible afterwards. Why? Why? Um, sanitary reasons. Just uh, you know. What? 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 I, this, so first of all, there's tons left behind. I promise. Right, right, and, right. And just the, just the overflow, getting rid of the overflow. What do you imagine that's going to do? I don't know. That's why I'm calling it. Nothing. Out. Nothing. Zero. Absolutely nothing. Okay. You're you're constructed to handle that, and whatever sort of falls out afterwards will kind of fall out on its own, and that's that. Right. That's why you but, make the big bugs. That's right. Thanks, Adam. But the bladder infection is from the direct trauma to that area. Okay. okay. All right. And so you so got to kind of the activity, not what's left behind. That's right. And um, some women have to take antibiotics every time they have sex. No kidding. No kidding. That certainly happens. 
Well, thank you very much. I'd All right. And good luck. This is uh, Chris, who's 18. Chris? Hi. Hey, what's going on? Hi. Uh, I was wondering if smoking weed can make you sterile. Well, it can reduce your testosterone levels. It can increase estrogen. It can cause breast development, particularly good in young times. Men. Yeah, good times. Adolescent males. Good times. Not, yeah. not females, unfortunately, uh, well, for the women. Me and my and it, sleep and, together a lot, and uh, uh, no protection, and um, she don't ever get pregnant. Well, good she will. Times. She will. All right. Thanks. Well, it's a rush roulette. All right, I'm going to go back a little bit now to Julie. Julie. Yeah? Yeah, I got my article on the persistent sexual arousal syndrome out, okay? Yeah. They actually abbreviate it to PSAS. Physiologic responses characteristic of arousal. Okay. Do not resolve with ordinary orgasmic experience. Arousal are usually experienced as unrelated to subjective sense of sexual excitement. Is that right? You're not yeah. really thinking about sex? Uh, yeah. Sexual arousal may be triggered not only by sexual activity, but seemingly non-sexual stimuli or even no stimulus. Yeah. The experiences but are uninvited, intrusive, and unwanted. Is that right? Yeah. Like, so I mean, like, okay. most of the time I'll be thinking about sex, but not most of the time. It'll happen no matter what. Yeah. Well, in this article, there was not, uh, you know, there wasn't much to tell you in terms of how to hand, handle this. I, boring was, bit. It's not a boring bit. It's kind of interesting. We've never talked to somebody with this uh, problem. Uh, let me see if this particular article has any, oh, yeah, you know, some medication maybe, like serotonin reuptake inhibitors, that sort of thing, medicines for depression. I was so just wondering if it was uh, like, if, like it could hurt my other systems in my body. No, uh, yeah. although you really should have an, a medical evaluation just to make sure there's not not something else triggering, like a you know some other endocrine disturbance or some other... Oh phenomenon in a general area so you ought to see a gynecologist okay you, I, I do want you to talk to adam would you mind hanging on a few minutes yeah sure all right good times this is uh, what are you gonna do we're 18 that's what we're gonna find out andrew yo hey what's up not much um my girlfriend had an abortion about a month ago or maybe a little less than that and i've just been feeling really guilty because of it and i know i have a hard time you know continuing our relationship we've been together for like two years now, and just I can't get it out of my mind. I just have this horrible guilt attached to it, so I don't know what to do. Well, what do you what do you mean guilt? Like I feel like I don't know. I kind of let her down by having this happen and kind of scarred her permanently. What are you she, gonna do? She didn't participate in this. Oh no no no! I mean like it was me and her, and then she had this, and she didn't really want me there for when the operation happened. So I just kind of. I'm trying kinda to understand just, the source of your guilt. So so you're feeling guilty about what? I don't know about her having to suffer the pain that me and her cause. And how is she doing? She's doing okay. I mean, we're we're still together. We're working through it. She's okay now. She was actually more okay with having it done than I was. And are you? Do you have strong feelings about abortion, or did you before this happened? Um. Well, like I was kind of raised in a Catholic family, so uh -huh. I guess you know, from a little kid, I was kind of told that it was wrong. Abortion. And, I mean, I thought. Yeah, I, I thought it was the right thing to do in our situation because we're not really ready to have a kid. But and so and so now that you've now that you've done this to her, the next move is to abandon her. That 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 you won't feel guilty then. Oh no, that's that's not it at all. So you said I, you you don't see that you can stay in this relationship. No, I feel guilty because I I don't know. I just the way I'm looking at it, and I can't really find another perspective, is that me and her made a mistake, and she had to pay for it. Right. So I don't I don't know how to deal with that. You understand why I hate our callers? I, I'm not sure I understand what kind of help you need. You're going to struggle with this. You're going to you're going to resolve it in some way. What you, you you opened up by saying you wanted to end the relationship. You didn't think you could stay with her. Is no, that no, true? no. That's not. That, I don't. Maybe you misunderstood me. That's not. That's not really what I said. Okay. What I said is that I still want to be with her. I just don't know how to get past this. How to get past this? How about dropping it? Just you've forgetting. Done, you've just done it. Not. It's done. If you have some penance you need to pay, it, that's about you. Go take care of it. She is handling herself. She's fine. She's not been spoiled or destroyed or decimated by this experience. This is all about you. Yeah. So there's all nothing right. to do with her. And you're, you're being unfair to her by, by at least emotionally abandoning her and sulking in your own crap for having really not taken care of things in the first place properly. And how about, you know, doing whatever penance you need, you feel you need to do, maybe consulting with your clergy and seeing, you know, how you can exonerate yourself if you ever can or what you need to do to feel better. Never doing anything like this again if it's important to you. 
supporting your girlfriend and getting on with your life, learning from this. All right. I don't think I don't know if that was real. This is a Monica Twenty. Monica. Hello. Hi. What's going on? Hi. Um, I've been trying to get a hold of you guys for a while. Actually, um, I'm back with my boyfriend now, but we had broke up a while ago because um, I found a condom in his trash can with. Can I say I don't know poo on it? <laughs> with poo on it. Hey, it takes yeah. all kinds. It does indeed. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, okay, yeah, go ahead. We just bought a dildo, and we're experimenting with that. And I'm at his house every single night, so I know he couldn't have cheated on me, but I do don't think, know. I don't do you know think he put the condom on the vibrator and showed the vibrator? In himself, yes. Yeah, good <laughs> time. Okay, so after I found that out, he had already gone to work, and I kind of got suspicious. So I was looking through his stuff. And I found, like, um, fat girl porn. Good like times. Obese. obese <laughs> okay. Obese girl porn. And I don't know. I mean, is this some sort of psychological thing? Because, I mean, I'm not overweight. I'm 110 pounds. And well, it, it's a fetish of some type. And it's certainly, you know, fetishes tend not to exist as isolated phenomenon. They're part of a, you know, more substantial. It's a symptom of psychological makeup, so to speak. But it doesn't mean he's a complete train wreck, and guys can have fetishes in their in their sort of porn imaginary life that don't really f bleed into their real life. So okay. it's kind of let, let you want to hold a second. I want to get another opinion on Adam for this one. Okay. Okay. Let's see what he says. Hold Good on. times. Good times. This is uh, Jessica nineteen. Um. Hi. What's up? Um. I was calling because I I want to know why my hymen's never broken, or at least I don't think it has. That's why you make the big bucks. Be because you haven't had sex. Well, no, I have had sex. Then you don't have a hymen. Is... Then you don't have a hymen. Okay. Well, there is never any bleeding or anything. Oh, oh well. Like oh well. Doesn't okay. always happen. The only reason I was asking is because like the guy that I was with accused me of not being a virgin when I was with him because. He said, like, stuff that's supposed to happen never happened he, like that. Well, why were you with an ass? I don't know. <laughs> the guy was an asshole, right? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't talked that, to him. That's a much that, more important but... issue than whether or not your hymen needs to be rejuvenated. Much okay, more important. So it, he, he's an asshole. That's what this all boils down to. It's like, just because there's not bleeding or anything doesn't mean it never broke? Doesn't mean a damn thing. If you, if you're, if you have had a, a penis inside your vagina, there's not a hymen. Okay. Basically, okay. Okay. Feel, be okay. feel better. Yeah. Do you continue to have relationships with assholes, or are you sort of? Uh... Well, that's like the first guy that I ever like, actually, first and only I ever slept with. So first. All right. Next time. No, not the right. Next time, get a nicer guy, right? Somebody okay. want to be a boyfriend with. All right. Good times. This is uh, Eric, who's twenty-three. Eric. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I have a question. Like every time, if I'm either going down on my girlfriend or having sex with her, um, she'll have like. Ab abnormal, a large amount of like mucus, Good and nice. I know, that, I know it's kind of like normal, but she won't even reach her orgasm state yet, and there will be like an abnormal amount, and it's I mean, a that's flood, like, a flood. What's that? Like a flood? Yeah, exactly. So and much that you can't sort of get any friction going when you have intercourse, or is it just no, a pure amount? It's just a, a large amount, and it's not because sometimes she'll feel like guilty about it and like. She doesn't like to be intimate at times because yeah, it's like... Yeah, I know. It's, and that's an unfortunate thing. There, there's a lot of women that have some sort of female ejaculation or a lot of fluid, and they feel like they're the only person on earth that this happens to, and then they don't right. want to have sex, and they feel guilty and weird, and no one ever talks about it. No, it's normal. Who cares? Eric, does, does it really bother you? No, it doesn't bother me at all. No. It okay, it's parents, so. there you what go. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's normal. Yeah. No, she 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 got to relax. This that's absolutely fine. It, so just just a sign. It's, it's a good thing. She's very aroused. Healthy okay. girl. All right. All right. All right. Good times. Uh, Sarah. By the way, who was that in line one? I was talking to the. Uh, what? Well, I was talking to somebody on line one that I think they hung up on. So, all right. What's going on, Sarah? You're twenty. Yes. Um. A few days ago, I started bleeding, and I thought it was just normal spotting, and I'm on the pill and everything, and um, it just kind of never went away, and I thought it may have, and I had sex with my boyfriend, and to say the least, it definitely did not go away, and um, I was just kind of worried about it because, I mean, so now, like, three or four days now, there's just 
continuous blood, and I want to know what that could be caused by. That's your pill. Oh, really? Birth, birth control. Are you, on, are you on a new pill? Um, no, I've been on the same one for at least a year. Mm, which one? Uh, Estracept. Estra Estracept. 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 You can't hear yeah, what you're saying. Estracept. Okay. Same, but yeah. Uh, well, you know, again, being sexually active can cause unstable lining to sort of uh -huh. slough. And if uh, you've been sort of marginal in terms of your stability of your endometrium with the pill, now it becomes unstable. Uh -huh. That's all right. You want to talk to your doctor about it. But mid-cycle bleeding, or, or even continuous mid-cycle bleeding, is a very common side effect of the pill. And it's even if it lasts for like four or five days? It may last the whole month. Oh. It probably will. And the and the uh, the shots, the Depo Provera, you bleed continuously for three months, uh -huh. continuously every single day. Uh -huh. So again, you might talk to doctor about changing the pill next time around if it really bothers you. Uh, this uh -huh. may come and go on its own without any difficulty. If you um, get a lot of pelvic pain, it's something you should look into right away because occasionally the pill doesn't work, and bleeding and pelvic pain is an ectopic or tubal pregnancy until proven otherwise. You have to check that. Uh -huh. out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right. The world is your oyster. I mean, because that's all the world is. Need we say more? Can't, what? Oh, we got to go to break? All right, so we will go to break. Uh, I'm Dr. Drew. Adam Carolla is, uh, I bet, on his way in here. He's been co-hosting the Jimmy Kimmel Show all week, and he will make his illustrious return. The phone number here is 1-800-LOVE-191. And as you see, I have a chance to burn through a few calls when Adam's not here, and we will continue to do that. I want to remind people, please, again, Buy the book, Cracked. Buy my book. Uh, I, I can't tell you how strongly I feel about the material. No, I don't get any money. I don't get any money for it. I get the satisfaction doing something I created and put a couple years of my life into. No, I don't. I, it, I wish I did. I don't. Um, people get some information I think is really important. And I was realizing today as I was doing a couple interviews that uh, I don't have here. the time. Oh, my God. He's here. Get that mic. That one. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm, I'm going to break. I'm going to break. I know. But I made it before the break. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Huh? All right, we'll be right back after this. Come on, Drew. Here go. Go. Music, Susan, 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 My kids are. Susan, I see. There you go. Hey, buddy, you don't need that cheat sheet. It's always like my zoom, my zoom, my zoom, zoom, zoom. Who says you can't? Teach an old dog new tricks. Drew, like, Drew always looks around for his cheat sheet that has the uh, lyrics. Has I, the I, lyrics on it, but uh, he doesn't need that. You don't need that, Drew. Good times. Man. All right. Hey, I'm back, everybody. Sorry, doing uh, Jimmy Come Alive uh, all week, doing a little uh, sidekicking uh, over there, and the uh, show ends uh, about five, six minutes after the show begins. So I uh, fly across town as fast as I can and uh, get over here. Uh, That's good. You get here right at the end of the. I get one segment in, which is a nice little piece, you know, yeah. piece of love line. For for you, not for the listeners. For, I, I understand that, but you know, I heard you kicking the guy's ass whose girlfriend had the abortion. I wasn't. The, I like was you're being a little too tough on that I, guy. I, the 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 problem I had with him was he wanted. It was all about him. He really didn't give an ass about his girlfriend. Yeah, she was fine. But well, he was overwrought. Yeah. So much so, he was trying to destroy the relationship. That's but, why I was pissed uh, off. But, Drew, this is uh, this has got a little cathartic at a certain no, point. No, no, no. You got no. issues with this. Do I? I, I? You know what you're, you know, you do have, if you want to piss Drew off, start, do that thing where it's about you, but it's not about the person right. who actually went through right. the tragedy. That's and right. And Drew will immediately get angry. Yes. Which is, uh, which is true. I yeah. mean, you should be that way to a certain degree, but... Yeah, I was listening, and it sounded like he was saying that uh, she she was uh, she went through this. He felt guilty that she went through it yeah. alone. Felt somewhat he, responsible. He was talking about uh, it screwing up the relationship and then possibly uh, breaking up. Then and he that, backed that, off that. He backed off it. I'm just saying he. This was one of the few guys that actually felt uh, some remorse over an abortion. All right. All right. Well, that's why the two of us. To buffer each other. No, if I was here, I would start yelling at him too. No, but I'm just, but, yeah, I'm just you're saying right. when I was that, driving my car, I'd no, to be a little to, tough on the on kid. On the spectrum of what we hear about where guys just dump women off or abandon them as soon as they get pregnant. Or call and want to know what her problem is because she's not putting yeah, out. Right. No, you're right. On the spectrum of love line, he's he's way up the scale. But that that whole I don't, I get so irritated by that narcissism that uh, you know, it'd be one thing if he said, What can I do to her? She's suffering. I feel like I need to do something. It's like 
I feel guilty. I've done something. I've, I've you know, I've, oh, there I've, you go again. Well, that's, that's that's that makes me angry. It's it's I've spoiled Obviously. her. Obviously. I've spoiled her. She so now she has to go through the abortion. She has to whatever feeling she has about it, and now she has to feel like she's been tainted by this guy too. Yeah, come on. No, I'm just saying he he can feel guilty. There's many men out there who after yeah, an abortion feel can feel a, right. a sense of loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're right, Julie. Okay, Uh-oh. Julie. Julie? All right. Julie's got the uh, persistent sexual arousal syndrome, and I wanted you to talk to her. Mm-hmm. What is that syndrome, Drew? It's where they keep having orgasm constantly without any sexual stimuli. They can never stop? She has them like every 20 minutes. For no reason? No reason. Just walking down the street? Not even walking, whatever. All right. Julie? Yeah? Have you had an orgasm in the last five minutes? No. Okay. I've been halfway asleep. Halfway asleep. Halfway asleep. <laughs> I see. You, will you have them in your sleep? No. Seems like you would. I've had them in my sleep, and I don't have that persistent problem. Although, um, you know, I never let the tank fill up, so I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know what you're saying. Uh, Julie. Yeah. So, Julie sounds like a pain in the ass already. No, no, but she's she's tired. She was she was actually a little more spry. Okay. So you want me to tell you? Again? He, I just want Adam to have a chance to poke at you a little bit. He's never right. talked to somebody that has this syndrome. And when I brought this article uh-huh. in, you questioned whether it could really exist, remember? No. Uh-huh. No. But okay. Right. Go ahead, Julie. So, does anything... So you, do you have... Do you masturbate still? No. Because no. I don't want to make it worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have a boyfriend? No. How do you hide it? How do I hide it? Yeah. Uh, like, I, hold on. Let me change phones. My phone's messed up. Uh, all right. All right. Right. You understand well, why I don't like Julie? She's going to bed, that's why. I know I was just yelling at you for yelling at the callers, but yeah. now I'm mad at Julie. Yeah. She's, like, annoyed that we've uh, asked these questions. Yeah, like, I kept her waiting. Do you have one? Nah. Do you have a boyfriend? Nah. Well, how do you do you do it? Nah. She's, we, she, we, we've uh, actually, we've taken time out of her busy, busy schedule to talk about her uh, female uh, orgasmic uh, syndrome. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's angry. Hello? Julie? Yeah. Okay. Again, sorry for calling so late, sweet pea. It's okay. Okay. So, what happens when you're with a guy? Have you ever had a boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, All right. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm done with Julie. Okay. I don't care. Here's the thing, it's everybody. It's part of her, her body that's alive. It's the one trying to spring to life. It's I like, know. Maybe it's zapped of all her energy. <laughs> it, you know what? You know what it's like. It's like she sprung a leak in her vagina, and all her essence is coming out. There, there's nothing left for us. Yeah. Crypt- kryptonite. All right. One more time. Julie. Yeah. Sorry, sweetie. Um. Okay. What can we do about this, Drew? Well, I was telling I'm, you, I'm, I'm, Gyne- gynecologist have a sort of anatomic evaluation, endocrine evaluation, and maybe start some antidepressant medicines, things that alter orgasmic functioning. Right. What is th- what is the antidepressant that will slow you down sexually the most? Prozac or Zoloft. Usually, right. Yeah. So if you don't know, normally when a healthy, regular, normal person gets on the Prozac or the Zoloft, it slows them down to the or point where sometimes down. they don't even want it at all. Right. So if we can give some of that to Julie, that'll shut her down to the maybe. point where yeah. maybe she'll be like uh, you and I. Mm. Julie? Uh, yeah. How about, uh, again, sorry for disturbing you. How about going to your doctor, getting yeah. a workup, and seeing maybe about getting some Prozac or Zola? All right. Um, yeah. All right, good times. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, like, could you, like, send me one of your books? Well, no, no I'm going to send books. You yeah. are? I'm going to do that. Like, um, why don't you talk to Ann off the air here? Oh, I want to really? send people. So you, you don't specifically have the kind of problems I want to send the book out to, but because you initiated this whole process, I may be able to How do about it. we, s- let's send her, like, a rock. <laughs> Julie, do you really think you deserve a book for this crappy call? No, no, it's something totally different than that. I'd rather oh, not okay. say it, but it's something totally different than I want, I want the book. Okay. All right. Uh, most most nights I would explore that cryptic message, but I'm in no mood tonight. All right. Maybe he'll send you the book. Maybe he won't. Anne's going to talk to you. All right. Hold on. All right. All right. Good times. Go to the nine doctor. Five. All right. Let's, uh, line you, five. five. You want to go to line five? Yeah. All right. Raina? Yes. You're 17? Yes. What's up? Um, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Mm. I just moved to Fresno, well, like, two months ago. And since I've been here, there hasn't been, like, jack to do. So, like, I listen to your radio station, and that's, like, the highlight of my whole entire day. 
But my question is, I listen to all these people, like, calling in with all these, like, stupid, stupid problems. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how you classify these people. Strangely, Raina doesn't stand out as different from the rest of the callers. Not really. Yeah, so. Uh, There are callers. Coincidentally. No. Teenagers. Like. What do you mean classify? Okay, there's people that listen, you know, because they want to know, because they know that someone stupid. Right. Is right. going to call in and ask this question, but they're all, they're going to be all dramatic about it, you know, and like nobody can ever just ask you something, like you know what I mean? No. Right. They I have don't to know be really. Ah, listen, no, look, who cares? <laughs> That's not a real question. It's sort of a critique I think mixed no, in with a question. I think she's curious about, is there something different about our callers? Who calls is sort of her thing. And and st- the strange irony is she's calling, asking that question, and she doesn't stand out as different than the rest. But Yeah, they're yeah, but, <laughs> screwed up teenagers who have difficulty forming a question, much well, like Raina. Well, we have two types, really. And I think Adam tunes into the type that have what I would call euphemistically cognitive problems. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-mm. They don't understand things? Yes. Okay. And then the the higher majority still, I believe, are those that have real serious emotional problems. And and people with more serious problems tend to be those that call radio stations. Yeah. So we select for people that are pretty disturbed. And you should all learn from these people's misfortune. And, yeah, that's, that's, that's the want. idea. Now, when you do hear a clear question, somebody calls, hey, I needed some information about fill in the blank. That's different. Those people are not disturbed. Those people just have a question. Mm-hmm. Is the blank the vagina? Is that what you Oftentimes, mean? yeah. I can't say that. Okay. Gwen? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. What's up? Um, first of all, I just want to say hi, you guys. I listen to you every night. Thank you. Um, okay, my question is, um, when I was nine, my father passed away. Um, and ever since then, you know, I've relied on guys. I'm a typical love line case. Um, mm. You know, I've relied on guys for Yet the you're attention. Not. You're not, though. We, yeah. we can feel it already. You're not really. Yeah. Because you know um, what your problem is. Yeah. Yeah, my problem was when I was 15, I worked at a haunted house um, locally, and I met this one guy. I was really attracted to him. He cheated on his girlfriend. Let me ask you something real quick. Uh, How much work can you get out of a local haunted house? I mean, (laughs) it seems to me that uh, somewhere around uh, October toward the end, maybe around Halloween, business would pick up, but... The other uh, 11 months out of the year, doesn't seem like there'd be a whole lot of foot traffic in a well, local haunted it, house. It's from um, middle of September to the beginning of November, and it's really nothing until Halloween season. So. Oh. Halloween. She, she worked oh. there for a while. So, yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. I know. Okay. okay. Anyway, um, I... Really so e- e- uh, let me just... Easter, not as big as Halloween in the haunted house business? No. Christmas? Um, they, they they actually tried to make like an elf house. It was very unsuccessful. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> people banging their head on the door jam. <laughs> all right, Gwen. So, what did you do there, by the way? Um, I was an actress. Um, which? Uh, no, I was a, vamp- a vampire. 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 Okay. I'm very right. very good at that. Let me tell you something uh, real quick about these haunted houses. I went up to the uh, Playboy Mansion <laughs> on uh, Halloween last year, maybe two years ago, and they had a haunted house. But I mean. They've come a long way. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It, it ain't the weird thing with, the, you know, the mom who puts the hamburger meat in the corner and says, that's brains, yeah, you yeah. know. Uh-uh. They're using lasers and holograms now and oh, stuff. Wow. And uh, this thing must have cost 75 grand to set up on a Hughes lawn, but scared the bejesus out of really? me. Really? Interesting. I mean, it, there's... It's come a long way, Drew. Yeah. I, I, if you have not been uh-huh. to a haunted house lately... I, mean, I was, well, yeah, was one of the you know, local church puts on or something yeah you, you, yeah they do the one where they take the card table yeah. and cut the hole in it and the guy put his head through it and then put a towel around it full of blood uh-uh new stuff weird and scary wow yeah all like right that. we're so actually good. really good we're in woodland hills you should come by yeah and have, you, have you had any deaths for, huh <laughs> have you had any heart attacks um no but we nightly have people pee in their pants Oh, and we oh, actually nice. have bonuses. We get cash bonuses if we get them to pee in their pants. Oh, my God. That, now we no, have no. What's number two? What do you get, like uh, 40 <laughs> bucks for number two and 20 for number one? I have no idea. Okay. So, anyway, you uh, no you, you met a 20-year-old 20, 20 guy when you were 15? Wait yeah. a minute. That, really, that's, that sounds dangerous to me that you, they encourage you to get people to pee their pants. Well, it, I don't know. The people who work there are kind of demented. Yeah, evidently. Evidently. Yeah. Right. Right. They really could get themselves in trouble, it seems to me. We got, right. okay. Now right. I'm bored of the hot right. house. Yeah. Big time. Right. 
Okay, so you met a guy who was, who was 20 when you were 15 working at the haunted house. Mm-hmm. And you had sex with him. Yeah. Were you um, in the outfit? Huh? Were you, were you in the vampire outfit? Actually, no, I wasn't. I was in part of it. I had a vinyl bra, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I understand. You had to take off a couple. I had to take no, the cape but, off in order for him to get in you. But I changed. But, uh, right. Okay. Afterwards. So. Any. Anyway, uh, you can't get the guy out of your head. Yeah. Um. I. I dwell on past relationships. Um. Mm-hmm. And I. Yeah, I, but uh, at least Gwen, you're 17. Um. At 17, Adam and I did that the same thing. Yeah. Not that we're the. I nailed a werewolf. Not that we're paragons of uh, adolescent emotional health, but cornhole the mummy when I was uh, fifteen, having difficulty letting go and obsessing about relationships—all that is normal, especially when you've had major losses like you've had, especially when you've chosen an unavailable guy that's older and you can idealize. It's all sort of a setup for trouble here. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, I completely understand, but right. um, you know, I understand that. I go, I counsel my friends. You know, they're going mm-hmm. through that, and right, I th- this was just a one-night stand. Um, well. We had some emotional attachment um, for about a couple weeks, mm-hmm. but basically I was jealous because my friend fooled around with him, so I kind of, you know, enforced that he was mine. Yeah. But. All right. Well, listen, you're 15. He was 20. The guy's a criminal. Yeah. You should be glad he's out of your life. Yeah. What is All the right. question now? Um, the question is, um, do you think that it's connected to my dad dying that I dwell on yes. past relationships? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. part of it. I don't know if it's the whole thing or not, but, you know, yeah. again, you're, you're having trouble with your relationships. Okay to get treatment for that if you want. I mean, yeah. you can do a lot better. Hey, I don't know. Is there a 15-year-old girl in America, and I know she's 17 now, but she was 15 at the time, that doesn't have some issues with men in yeah. relationships? Yeah, yeah. I mean, society forces them pretty much to feel that way, don't they? In many respects. I mean, can you, can you grow up sort of uh, just weaned on Britney Spears videos and yeah. MTV and and uh, just not just sitting around watching cable all day. Can you not have some issues? Excellent point. It, it, I, I think it's going to just be impossible. So w- when you think you're the only one out there who feels this way or has an issue, almost everyone out there does. Yep. All right. Except for me. Avril? Hello? You're 20? Yep. Um, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Um, yep. I bought your book. And I totally read it and loved it and actually passed it on to several of my friends, and they've all read it. They they it. should be buying their own. Well, they don't all have money to buy it. So. That's good. I just want them to read it. Thank you. All right. Hold on a second. We've got to take a break. We're running a little bit late. Do we need to speak to Avril when we come back? She wanted to know where I'll be signing books. I, I most of The remaining book signings are out here on the West Coast. She's in Michigan. So, And if I do go out further, I'll announce it on the radio. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. It's Love Line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew's under the console looking for something. your pardon. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Tomorrow night, Dr. Alter. He does uh, vaginal rejuvenation. He does gender reassignment. It's be interesting. He does it all. He will so make he talk to him she. For a while before you get here. Maybe yeah. I had to keep him out the first 20 minutes since we don't rehash all the questions. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We'll bring him in. I'll try to get here about uh, ten eighteen, and then uh, we'll let the festivities begin. Right. Because uh, this guy, well, he does um, he does the penile scrotal marriages, <laughs> which I, I found funny. Like, do you take these balls to have and to hold? But uh, no, he. Uh, this is when the penis and the scrotum is uh, is attached, right? With uh, like that thing that's under your tongue, frenulum, frenulum. Yeah. So like when you get a boner, your balls come with you. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if I'd want to fix that. A little, little extra something to stuff into the condom. You know what I mean? Like a woman yeah, stuffs gonna, a bra. You're going to stuff all that into the vagina, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm Might not feel so good for either of you. Mm-hmm. Especially, okay. I'm just saying, filling out the condom no, would no, be I, nice. I, with I, the yeah, ball stuffage in there. Mm-hmm. He does, uh, what else does he do, do Drew? He um, does uh, rejuvenation on the vagina. I don't know anything, if he does the hymen. It seems like any, anything that you could do to a genitalia, he's willing to do. be interesting to talk to him about piercings and stuff, see if he has any problems you know, with that. Yeah. Okay. He must have some wacky nationality. He's got to have a crazy nationality. I have never met the guy. I'm going, I'm going Indian. No, not all right. Something out there. So I'm going. I, I mean, I can tell you what he's not. He's not... He's not Mexican. 
He, he, he could be Asian, but he's not Japanese. And um, what else? He's not like uh, Icelandic and uh, he's not Puerto Rican. Uh, well, I could keep going forever, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go. He's uh, some some uh, I- Indian. That's what I'm going with. Uh, All right. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so do we finish with Avril? We're done with her? Well, you're not, you're not, you're going to be signing some books out in Santa Monica next week, yeah, right? Tuesday. All right, but uh, she's calling from Michigan, so yeah. uh, tough. Jesse? Yes. You're 15? What was that? Oh, you're 20. What's up? Yes, I'm 20. Um, my question was, um, it's because my, my girlfriend, she's uh, six months pregnant right now. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I've, like, had, like, an STD since, like, we've been together. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted to know if um, if that can affect the baby and like and what yeah, so way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it very can. very serious for the child. But I'm sure the doctors are checking for that in her. Okay. And how come you haven't had this treated? Um, I just I don't know. I've never had an STD test before. I what makes you think you have something? Um, I don't know. I have like um, I have like these black things on like. On my penis and stuff. Yeah, I don't think that's an STD. No. That's probably like, uh, fleas. <laughs> Maybe ticks. Could be ticks. Yeah, the, sometimes I've had, I had a patient once, and I have these black things on my penis, and when I when went to examine it, what he had was black things on his thighs, and those little it, black things I don't know, were critters. Like, oh. It was uh, heard, ooh, pubic lice. I have, cramps. I have um, like a red bump on my left thigh, like right next to my penis, like close. Yeah, yeah. This, this none of this well, sounds like count. Yeah, no. none of this sounds like STD. Someone should look at it, but none of this sounds like STD. And you, uh, you gonna get married, Jesse? Um, no, I'm not married. I don't know if I'm gonna get married. All right, you're gonna raise the child, though. Yes. All right, you sound enthusiastic about that prospect. Can <laughs> you? Do you have a job? Um, no, not right now. Well, right now, I'm not right working. now. No, no, no. All right, you looking for a job? Yes. Okay. Well, um, sounds like sounds like you make a great dad. Thanks. Okay, and buddy. Get this checked out. It get. doesn't sound like anything. Yes, STDs can profoundly affect pregnancies. They can cause terminations, like miscarriages. It can cause infections of the child. It can cause bacterial infections in the in the uh, in the womb. All kinds of lovely, lovely things. So it can infect the baby during delivery. Bad things. Bad times. When I'm in charge, Drew, I'm going to uh, pay special attention to guys named Jesse. Oh, yeah. Always some trouble yeah, yeah. with the Jessies. Jesse James. Always, Always trouble. Started, yeah. Always trouble. I'm going to take a look. I, 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 I would li- I'm going to do, do some work and see who has a higher uh, rate of teen pregnancies and uh, homicides and stuff like that. I'm sure Jesse's going to be close to the top of the list. And I will then look at those people, and I will tag them, and I will have to round them up, and I'll put them in uh, what I call uh, reconditioning camps. Well, in a way, the parents that name their kids Jesse will be doing you a favor. You won't have to observe yeah. them and monitor them. You just, just go find tag them. them right away. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and once in a while, a good kid named Jesse will get mixed up in so the uh, reconditioning yeah, camp. But what are you going to do? It's a numbers game. He doesn't care. I'm going to do the same thing on the female side with the name Cammy. <laughs> I will focus my attention on the Cammies. <laughs> Very high teen pregnancy. Right. All right. Let's talk to uh, Carla. Carla? Hi. You're 21. You're not on my list of names to uh, look out for, so you're fine. <laughs> That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want me to tell you my problem? Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, my husband and I aren't getting along because he's self-centered and stubborn and verbally abusive. Yeah. Why'd you marry him? I was, I was 18, and he was in the Navy. And, I mean, I love him. Sure. Probably. Yeah, that's, that, by the way, unacceptable answer on Loveline. Why'd you marry him? That's it. Well, it's all she was saying she, she was, she, to move out. She was saying she was stupid. Uh, no, no, no. She said something more important. She, she wanted to move out. Yeah, okay. All right. Viable. <laughs> she needed to escape a horrible home. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not that horrible. So um, he's going to go to anger management, but when we fight, I want to leave him, and sometimes yeah. I don't think it's worth it, and I just want to, like, get this over with, but I don't want right. to make life right. hard on my baby. Is he drinking nope. when he does this stuff? No, he drinks, but not... That's just, he's just a jackass. <laughs> okay. And yeah. do you have a boy or a girl? I have a boy. Oh. Always breaks my heart, because the girls oh. at least get into stripping, but the guys... I'm not going to get into stripping. Um, no, 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 the daughter. Not, not you. Your daughter. 
<laughs> oh, guys, no. guys no, end up putting shivs in other guys. You understand that seeing this aggression between parents is yeah. traumatizing to kids. I know, I know. It leaves, it, know. leaves an imprint on That's them. That's the other. What's the kid's name? Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Ethan. Ethan. Oh, well, see, now, now, now I'm okay. torn. I'm You're torn. Okay. Because what? normally I would tag him immediately when I'm in charge because he's got the uh, dad is in the Navy. He's verbally abusive. He's aggressive. But on the other hand, you have that gay name, Ethan. He's you know, gay. He's, he's going to, yeah, gay porn, possibly. It's no, that's a really okay. good name. Get on your knees. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good name. It saved the kid from uh, my reconditioning camp. Okay, that's good. There's no Ethans or Seths in there. <laughs> or Stephens. Uh, but All right, I so let, yeah, um, Carly, your your phone line is horrible. Here's here's what we got to do. Okay. Uh, I know you're angry at him. As long as if he does go to the anger management yes, courses works. and That's he right. gets better and he works on it, then you two should stay together. That's Only right. if he's working on it, and you need you need you got some things to work, you on, work too. on too. Absolutely, but you got to keep working for a long time, not a couple of weeks of anger management, like a few years of work on this, and maybe things will be okay. all on behalf of uh, young Ethan. That's right. We'll be right back. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. All right, Drewski. Oh, enjoying a little cool weather for a change. I was. Gonna, I was. I knew you'd bring that up tonight. Yeah, it, you can. It's common. I don't. I, don't, I almost don't want to talk about it for fear that the heat's going to return. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That that is always one of the most miserable periods of the year when it you think fall's coming and then pow, back to a heat wave. Mm-hmm. Very upsetting. I was watching the news tonight, and I'm really, when the weatherman comes on, I'm like one of these women <laughs> whose husband's cheated on them multiple times and then promised never again and i buy into it right like i find myself sitting there and they're going well it was cool today it was 75 degrees in downtown la now tomorrow it's going to start warming up look for temperatures in the mid 80s then uh come thursday high pressure rolling in and and i'm sitting there yeah and i'm going but I'm, i'm always going oh oh okay and then and then saturday another now it's going to warm again we got high pressure system coming in now by Sunday, and I'm sitting there going, okay, so now what am I doing Sunday? And then I think to myself, these a-holes don't know anything. They're wrong all the time. It's amusing. It, it, you know what it's like? It's like a psychic. Yeah. You know, when they go, yeah. there's going to be a big earthquake coming yeah. up, and the, the next president, his so last name's going to start with a J, and all this. And you find yourself going, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you go, wait a minute, you crackpot. You don't know anything. You're wrong all the time. I I watch the news. I get sucked in like like it's actually news. So and that's then, and the then problem. You're angry. Then you're angry. you're angry. They put it between stuff that's happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the sports comes on and they're like UCLA over Alabama this week, and the Dodgers beat yeah. the Expos, and then he comes in and goes, "It's going to be 83 tomorrow," and you go, "Oh, that's news. Mm. That's news." No, it's speculation, and it never turns out that way. Eh, they can go about 12 hours from whatever time it is, but if they start going into the five day, forget it. Never happened. So upsetting. And never an apology either. Fernando? Yeah. You're 25. Hi. Hi, yeah, Fernando. Um, long time listener, first time caller. Actually, Thank not really you. first time. I've been trying calling for like a long time. He's gay. Drew, yeah, yeah. I am. Go ahead. Um, well, uh, I, for a long time, I've been kind of toying with the idea of, you know, trying out drag because, um, well, you go to drag shows, you know, you're just bringing sure. first come out, and it's just so, Big Daddy just so much fun, Carlitz. and so, you know, <laughs> everyone's expressing about? themselves and everything and doing totally different things, and sometimes you can even do it so well that it's even anonymous. And you're I, gay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm confused. I, 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 I'm, why am I not following this? You want to well, know... Basically, I was wondering whether or not, I, you know, what I should do about it, because... Um, I kind of want to go into that and try it, maybe. Once because it, would, because it, want to because I'm afraid of what might, what the repercussions that might come out for my family. My mom. Well, let me understand like, this. Really but aren't aren't these sort of playful events? I mean, they're not like you're not. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like Halloween almost, right? More yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, every, every hold on, Drew. Every day is Halloween when you're gay. <laughs> no, it's and not Christmas. every day. Every but day. is it something? Is it a lifestyle you'd get into, and that's why people would report back? Some people take it up as a lifestyle. I just but are you afraid? Because are you afraid, afraid of gonna... the repercussions that I might end up liking it so much that I might take it up as a lifestyle? Okay, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, and all right. Thing is, um, that I'm afraid that I might 
uh, you know, my parents, my mom will find out and she'll like freak out or something, you know? Do your parents know, know you're gay? I, oh, yeah. So, uh, no. they all, they, it kind of a uh, <laughs> Seagulls story. know he's gay. Yeah, but Fernando, you're, you're 25. I mean, right. You, whatever you want to do. It, they you, shouldn't have named you Fernando if they didn't want you to be gay. <laughs> That's number yeah, one. You know, it's, it could have been worse. They could have named me Virgil. Could have been Ethan. <laughs> yeah, Fernando I is the Latino thing. Ethan. <laughs> That's a gay <laughs> Latino version of Ethan. All right, so listen, uh, Fernando, you're gay. Yeah. Your your parents know you're gay. Yeah. They're okay with it. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you're, I and don't you're, know you're, if I'm a dad. I don't. Uh, okay. you're, his, you're Hispanic. Yes. And, and that that's a tough one for Hispanics sometimes. It can be, there's a machismo thing that's hard to. Actually, yeah. that is that's true. Yeah, and so um, this is this is putting a nail in that whole coffin again. You know, going. Especially with my, I, I live with my grandfather yeah. since my grandmother passed away, so yeah. that really doesn't help much either. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised he hasn't um, killed himself too. Listen, <laughs> uh, Fernando. Did, actually. What's that? Almost did actually. Your grandfather? No, I did. Oh, you did. Almost, What's, yeah. Why? What well, saved you? Um, pretty much you guys. Thank you, Fernando. Listening to you guys, I mean, I didn't come out until I thought I was ready, until, like I was 19, and I, you know, heard everything you guys had said, you know, your comments about coming out and, some, and stuff like that, and then at times even, I even think to myself, what would Dr. Drew say, you know? Oh, my God. Well, you know, I, I, there's nothing, the, interesting, I have no strong feelings about you, you know, going down this path that you find enjoyable. It's just a recreation for you. Oh, uh, well, wait a minute. you got to live your life. No, I, I, my, my, well, But my concern is that he gets into this as, as so of course. heavily that he doesn't do any other productive thing, you know what I mean, that, that takes over. Once you don that flirty handful of chiffon, there's no Feathers. going back, my friend. <laughs> Do you understand me? That's the thing, you know. I have a friend that uh, just moved to L.A., and he, for like, the longest time, he'd been telling me, oh, we got to do this one time. You know, just one time, we'll do it together, and, you know, we'll just let it go, and that's it. But I don't know. It's just like. All right, here's, here's what I want you to do. No, I want Fernando to, to do it one time and then call us back and report. Yeah, let's try heroin once, No, this too. is not. Listen, <laughs> if, if, but if there was a pattern out there where people did yeah. this and were sort of sucked into a All vortex, right. I would know about if it. You're I don't hear do about it, that. You're going to do it. All I right. don't hear about that but as move a problem. Out, but listen, your, your poor grandfather, <laughs> who I'm picturing is out front of his house, leaned up against a cactus sleeping with the sombrero tilted over his head <laughs> and the poncho. Really. But What's that? Enough, he was a he was uh, uh, he did manage a, a ranch for a while when, it, when uh -huh. I was See? younger. I knew it. Probably had a decal <laughs> of a Brahma bull on the door of his truck, right? No. Oh. No. No. Thought I knew it. It was Ronald Reagan's ranch. Yeah. yeah. All right, listen, Fernando, uh -huh. move out though. You're 25. No, I no. The reason I moved in was because um, he's a diabetic, and yeah. um, I they needed. Either he move in with my aunts and uncles, which he didn't want to do, and he didn't want to lose his place and his privacy, or I move in and help. All right, I'm bored. But look, here's what I'm worried about with uh, young Fernando. Sounds like a delight. I'm worried. I mean, here's the whole thing. When, when, if you're gay, you're gay. That's fine. God knows you can find plenty of work in this town as a gay man. Ran into a casting director today. Oh, my God. God was just feet, like a producer. His feet weren't touching Producers. the ground. It's a casting director. Yeah, producers, anybody. No, no, but anyone you mean like, in the like industry. The, like the movie, the producer. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just. Uh, he or the play. Went, went by like a hummingbird. <laughs> and it was great, too. There's nothing more entertaining than a gay man who's flustered. I walked into the guy's office. He was like. And then somebody popped their head in and was like, Sydney, did you see in his office? He's like, oh my God. He was like <laughs> running in circles and he sprinted out of the place. And. Uh, I can't say that I was uh, unhappy to see him go, but and I always like it when the person I'm supposed to talk to leaves and they just leave me some wait, wait, I didn't think you, I didn't think you went to casting directors. I don't think you were. Uh, no, I, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, you don't read for them when you get there. What do you do? No, I, I did. I had a. Uh, what? You did an audition? Yes. What? Yes, once a year. You yes. stooped to that level. There's a uh, new movie coming out called uh, Taxi with uh, Queen Latifah and Jimmy Fallon and. Uh, I don't know if I should be insulted by this, but I read for the role of fat cop. <laughs> <laughs> fat cop number two? Just fat cop. <laughs> it's always insulting when they have fat in front of whatever it is, the role they want you to read for. It was just one of these things where um, they called last minute, they this and they that. I'm such a prick. They were like, uh, can you come in Monday at around 5 o'clock? I'm like, where? Fox. Which one? Out on Pico? Yeah. No. 
No, no, not a five no. O'clock. I'm not going to sit in traffic uh, for three yeah. hours well, so I can not, not get this prick. part. That's being a human. No, game. but I just do it. And I suggest everyone else do this too. I said, and they always do it too. They go, Monday's the last day we'll do it. And so it's like, well, all right, then fine. Because look, you know, you know, you're not getting the role. So I said, uh, well, I'll do it Tuesday. We got to do it at uh, 11:30. So I showed up at 12 and did it. That's good. Yeah, it's fine. And then when I was done, the. Uh, the woman was like the women I did it with. They're like, "That was good. That was great." Uh, I mean, I, I we feel good. And I was like, eh, eh, "Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it." And they're like, Whatever. "Well, no, no. I think maybe." And I was like, "Oh, I said, I'm, who are we kidding? I do one of these a year just so I can say I did it. I'm going home." And she's like, "But you, you may have." And I was like, "Look, this save it for the save it for an actor who needs it. I mean, I'm not trying to be a prick. I'm just saying there's a five percent chance I got this role." That's fine. I got plenty of gigs. I'm I'm going going to back to uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live, and then right. I got to go do Love Line. There's plenty right. of stuff going on, so right. don't worry about it. But uh, yeah, Taxi with uh, Queen Latifah, everybody. Good look, time. look look for that coming out. It is you know the only good thing about going out on uh, auditions, which I never do anymore. Mm. But you get to then watch the movie you audition for come out in the theater. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's like six months later. Yeah. I mean, I auditioned for uh, Saving Private Ryan. Wow. That's just some small nothing part. Still not good enough to get the nothing part. But the point is, is I love that movie. Yeah. And I, I actually remember watching the movie and seeing, uh, seeing the part that I screwed up. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of nice. Wait till you see the the uh, Mary Kate and Ashley film. You'll be you'll be uh, you'll Mary Kate and Ashley. Oh, cry. You'll, what are they calling that? New York Minute. New York Minute. Yeah. All right, the Mary Kate and Ashley film. Yeah. Is Ashley cool with her being the second second yeah. Billy? It hasn't come up. They don't know. Mm. It just uh, just starts that way and that's it. Now it's that way forever. I guess, and they and they like position themselves always the same way too. Like what do ones on the right, ones on the left. Oh, really? Like like anyone knows? We anyone we, know? we interestingly do that with our kids too. We, I don't know what that is. I mean, but no, no one knows the difference between those two. No, they do. Oh yeah, they, they do? do. Yeah, yeah. People have their oh, favorites. Yeah, too. their dog knows, but no one else. No, listen. No. I can tell the difference. True. I know this is going to sound weird, but do you think they menstruate at the same time? Probably. I mean, that they're biologically the same. They're no, the same you're rhythms sick for stuff. thinking of that. <laughs> really? You really think they do? Look, you took un- two unrelated girls and put them in a room together and make them work together for three months. They'll do that. Yeah, we've synced up. Yeah, it's bad. All right. So you think you think they do about the same time? Huh? I don't know. All right. Trina? They, by the way, are willing to come on this show, but you're going no, to have to be kind to them. I will, but that's never going to happen. Trina? Yeah? You're 18? I am... I want to know why you're not running for governor of California. Oh, boy, could I really straighten out this. Uh... But I know why. Why? Why? Well, well, Adam is, you know, he's not exactly motivated. You just heard about what he does in terms of his casting commitments. Somebody needed to go get his signatures for him to put him on the yeah. ballot. It didn't happen. You guys let drop the ball. If you he, if he actually you put him on the stump, he'll he'll. <laughs> yeah, he'll I got ideas. Oh yeah. boy, do I got He's ideas. Adam, huh? I want you to rule the world. So yeah, hurry. it would really it would help. Oh well, man, then, with some heads roll. Decision. Heads would roll if I was governor. Do you hear that, Drew? Mm-hmm. Oh, I would get rid. Of, oh, the son of a bitch. Now I'm all fired up. Now, I'll tell you. I know I've talked about it before. I got to talk about it again. Those electronic freeway signs, which are constantly <laughs> being updated. Yeah. The other night, I was coming into work. Yes. The uh, 110 was closed down. Nothing on that goddamn freeway sign. They only fire it up when when there's an amber alert now. You know what I'm saying? I know. What? Don't we need to know when freeways are closed down? You know what I'm mad about? What are you mad about? That it better these, be the same thing no, I'm mad different. about. These mother, well, then I'm mad these mother at that. efforts are getting up and going, this is the most undemocratic thing. This is the most destructive. Wait a minute. The major- vast majority of Californians want this. What the F is undemocratic about that? No, oh, that's knows? That's the tyranny. I just ever it's such a mess. I mean, you see uh Gray Davis just seems like a wet noodle. Obviously, he hasn't done anything for this uh for this state. Then he, then he, Schwarzenegger just seems like nothing too. He's just up there with these these stupid platitudes talking about being a family man every 10 seconds and I and there's nothing worse than a candidate who does that uh, uh you know, when I go home, I talk to my children about, "Oh, shut up." You, you know what? You know. Let me tell you something. What politicians do? They talk way too much about their faith. They talk way too much about their God. They talk way too much about their kids, and they respect their wife way too much. When you know they don't really respect them or give a rat's ass about them, and they're on, out on the road banging secretaries and campaigning. Please, 
I don't want you. I, you know what I want? I want a single atheist. I want a guy up there who goes, listen, I got no ties. I got no ties to a wife. I got no, I got no kids. Using my time up, and uh, ain't no maker tugging on my shirt sleeve wanting a favor either. I got nothing. I'm free and clear. I'm here to work. Most That's of, it. Yeah. And here's what we're going to do. You want to know what my policy is? Whatever makes the most sense. I don't want the guy going back and talking things over with his wife or having his kids tell him what went on in the third grade. Hey, I, I don't know. What, why do we have to love the guy so much? They're all pieces of ass. Just get in there and get busy. I don't need, I, I, look, I don't care if you're gay, if you're straight. I don't care what relationship you have with your wife. I don't care if your kids like you or you have kids at all. And I don't care what religion you are. Just go get in the office and get busy. You know, I care, though, if they've had to real, have real jobs and things. Yeah, I like. I, I do not like career politicians. They're they're not connected to reality. No, and I don't like that. No, and all they do is collect money. I mean, their whole their whole life becomes about collecting money. That, been, that's their job. It's the only job they've ever had. And they stop doing their job so they can collect money. But that's their sense of what they do. That's you know what I mean. If you never uh, did anything else I than know. that yeah. since you were in high school, kills me. It, you know what it kills me? It really kills me is like when the president goes out and campaigns for some senator or something. Halfway into his gig, like, hey, Lord ass, get your get your ass back in the White House and get busy. You you're in Idaho. You you're talking to a bunch of meat packers because you want Senator what's his blow to get in the get no get back and get busy. Everyone's just out. Oh, just ah, it kills me. Well, I, I just, oh, we get it now. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm fired up here. But let me tell you one more thing. Okay, let me just tell you one more thing. And as you know, if I was elected governor. Of California would all be my, the whole the whole campaign would be called "Shake Your Ass." I want everyone to move. <laughs> no. I want people on the road yeah. to get moving. Yes, I uh, I, uh, I I pride myself on on uh, honking the horn at least three times every time I get in a car. <laughs> Sometimes just in my garage. Nice. If I haven't done just the three out on the yeah, road, yeah. yeah. I uh, honked through a guy uh, two times today. The a hole that wasn't turning right when the a hole behind him wasn't honking on his horn, and I had to get on the horn. Let's go. Let's pick it up. Shake your ass. Saw a commercial uh, last night, and this is what kills me. It's the uh, Allstate commercial. They actually use a tortoise. They, it's oh, like yeah. it's that stupid Allstate commercial where they have just a guy's hands and hear the guy's voice. And he's like, I have the tortoise over here, and we got the rabbit over here. Now, the tortoise, he gets a reward because... It, no, he doesn't. He drags his fat shell around. What do you mean he gets a reward? He's not going anywhere. No, but the rabbit, he's a bad rabbit. He's bad because, why? Because he moves? I, I thought we were supposed to reward speed. Like, if, if you're wide out in the NFL and you run a, a five-minute 40, aren't you cut? Do, do, do anyone want to get on an airplane that flies? What about the old prop planes that flew like 80 miles an hour? Take you six years to get to New York. Was that applauded or faster? No, no. they get there at the same time as the Jets. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> same thing. It's all the same. <laughs> Stupid all state with their. Uh, we're gonna give <laughs> nice turtle, turtle. How dare you? I want people to start moving. If you don't people, you don't feel like driving. Don't don't get behind the wheel. If you do, start moving. And people are behind them. Start honking the horn. Everybody get on that horn. Should be like New York. Laura. Yes. Got me fired up now, Drew. <laughs> What's your question? I had a question. Couple questions for Drew. Um, first, I would saw that he is going to be at the University of Utah Friday. in October doing a love line. October. I think I'm going to be there this Friday. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Um, or is it just the same questions that you got, or you answer on the radio? Or No, it's a little different. It's a little different. It's, it's, a, it's more of a presentation. You'll see. It is, you it's boring because I'm not there. That's right. <laughs> and then also on your book, um, is it just people that have a problems with addiction or is it does it no uh, anybody you'll there's a ton to learn by reading this book trust me it, right it's about even the all-state turtle could learn something it, it's about if you're interested in me and my life it, it's a lot of very personal account but also they just addiction becomes a metaphor for me so for so many things that have gone wrong in our culture and our world and in terms of traumatic child rearing and uh, you know the whole uh, nike world that young people are brought into and uh, we explore that a little bit in this book Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. All right. See you. Yeah. Now. Good Bye. Mm -hmm. True. Never stop working, do you, buddy? Out on the road. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's talk about how much you love your family, but no, you're always uh, on the road. Think about this. For the last, like six, a last six months, I've been like 
Doing what? Uh, nothing. I've been Sitting just, home? No, I've been working the hospitals and stuff, but really low key for quite a few months. All right. So you're coming so out. So now I'm mm, coming out part a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but just that travel. I, you know, you get you get so good at it. You know what I mean? It's like anything else. I, a three hour flight for me, I don't even notice. Mm hmm. I, yeah, I can, you know. That uh, there was a story today about a guy who uh, stowed away in an airplane. Yeah. Packed himself up like a crate and shipped himself home. Wow. Like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> Oh. They don't seem to check that stuff, which is uh, always a little disconcerting. And as I was, I was, I was looking at this news story, and the guy, you know, was in the cargo hold of a plane. It was a commercial plane, but he's down, and he was like in a box or something. And I thought, still not as uncomfortable as that seat that faces the wrong way on, on Southwest. the Southwest flight. Yes, yeah. uh, well, maybe the same, but marginally less. No, the box is better. You can move around. You yeah, out you, got, you got yeah, and you can face the crate you're the right not way. No, so smelly fat guy to sit next to you. No, where, you, where, you, where your legs have to interlock yeah. like a, <laughs> like you're sitting in a like gay Roman bath, like your <laughs> knees up against the other guy's knees. Jessica. Yes. You're 17. Yes. What's up? Well, um, every time after me and my boyfriend have sex, it stinks like really bad. And, like, because I don't see him that often, just on the weekends usually. And mm -hmm. when I get there on the weekend, on Friday or whatever, it, it you know, I don't stink anymore. It'll be all fine. But then after we have sex and it stinks again, he tries to tell me that it's me and I don't think it is and I don't know why. Well, you, it's you because you have an infection and it's him because he probably given it to you. <laughs> and that that's the way it goes. Well, what kind of effect, an infection would it be? A vaginal infection usually. Well, I mean, for him, because I don't think it's me. No, it's it's both of you, probably. Really? Well, I never had any problems before. Well, he may have started the, the you guys giving it back and forth, but mm -hmm. it's now something you share. By the, by the way, you're, you're 17. Yeah. Uh, the, I've not had any problems before at age 17 doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Yeah, you just, before was nothing. Yeah, this is what happens. Right. You don't. You're not sick until you are. You start. You start having regular sex with. Uh, who's this guy? I don't trust him. He's twenty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're calling from Alaska. Yes. Let me check the age of consent in Alaska. Oh, it's probably like four. Fifteen. Fifteen. Huh? Fifteen. Sixteen. 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 What's he do? Work on the pipeline? No, he's um, actually he paves and. He does a bunch of different things, but. Paves. A good job, but. Has has a good gig. Huh? Do you have a plane? Do what? Do you have a plane? A plane? Everyone in Anchorage has a plane, don't they? Yeah. We have lots okay. of planes. <laughs> okay, Drew, stop yeah, talking. Yeah, forget it. Okay, so uh, you only see him on the weekends. Yeah. And then you uh, he pass infections back and forth. Okay. So, get you need treated. to go to a gynecologist. Both, both need to get a yeah, treatment, okay? I have. And? And I don't have... I've been tested for everything. I don't have anything that I know no. of. Well... Then it is him. Yeah, and I've been with him for almost nine months now, and it didn't start for a couple of months afterwards. But and you've been tested since the smell developed? Yeah, I've been tested a couple of times since then. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you. And it, does the smell happen just moments after you have sex? Like... It doesn't. It's not like right after, but see, I can't even. I can't even swallow anymore because it just tastes really. Oh, bad. so his semen is stinky. Yeah. Ah. Oh, <laughs> really? Could have come right out with that. Oh man. But is it, what's it smell like? Herring. I don't, Imagine I don't Alaskan know. guys with asparagus. Like fish. It's not. It's, I don't know what it. Garlic. Like. Yeah. You can't swallow anymore. No. Like, uh, like back when you were twelve and thirteen. That. No, I didn't have old age of seventeen. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. Now, what are you doing in Alaska? Um, what am I doing right now? Yeah. Um, sitting in my garage. Okay. 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 In the garage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we actually right. have those up here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, baby doll. All uh, right. Well, so the answer to her question is his semen stinks, and I guess tastes bad too. I would imagine, like in the middle of winter, that if you beat off outside, that your semen would freeze before it hit the ground. Do you think that's possible, Drew? No. I'd not, like, I'd not like not to think that was possible. And you, that you, would, on Mars you would make like a semen bridge <laughs> between your penis and the ground. So again, back to the cartoon images. The world's yeah. worst rainbow. <laughs> oh. do you, you don't think so? No. You don't think it's any place that cold? No. 
Even if it was like, you know, uh, yeah, it might get down to 35, 40 below, and then a wind chill of like 70 below. Mm, still, you know what I mean? Still's not going to freeze instantly. Do you think you could beat off you could, in you 70 could beat below? Off in, in some liquid nitrogen, though, and watch it go. <laughs> I'm going to do that. There you go. Okay. Get me some of that liquid nitrogen. We're going to take a quick break. I'm going to find some liquid nitrogen. And we're going to be right back. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. We just had a little buzz kill in here. We found out we are drinking decaf. Yeah, but I was getting stimulated anyway. <laughs> Such a lemming. Look at you. We walked in the kitchen. I saw the uh, Starbucks decaf, and I said, "Holy Christ, Drew! We've been drinking decaf." And Drew points to the uh, the universal sign of decaf, the which orange. is the, <laughs> the orange coffee. All and he goes, "That's no, that one's decaf." You're in denial. You're in decaf denial. Deep denial. You know? Deep denial. And I was like, "Listen, Drew. Do you think anyone else around this dump buys Starbucks coffee other than us?" No, this has got to be the stuff we've been drinking. Drew's like, no, can't be. I said, oh, yes. Deep down. All right. All right. Now, now I'm falling apart. <laughs> Drew, I need, I need some. I need some caffeine. I need something. I'm coming undone. Lindsay? Yes? You're 23? That's correct. What's up? Oh, well, I was just calling because, like, I just started listening to your show, and yesterday I happened to hear um, uh, Dr. Drew say something about polycystic kidneys. Right, we had a woman call in whose family had a family history of that, and she was having pain in the sort of flank area by her kidneys. Right, and, and I, I, I got to get an ultrasound. You thought maybe it only runs in males? No, no. I said it, it, it's autosomal dominant, but I I thought it had a male dominant. It goes. It's it's highly. What's that mean? It's oh, okay. very very genetically. But but I might. But somewhere in the back of my mind, I was saying I think there's a predisposition for men more than women. Even so. Oh, okay. Uh, I but I don't know if that's true or not. To Quite check and enough. say that, um, well, I've had two kidney transplants, so it, but it can run in, in both. So yeah, I just don't know, like, like maybe I misheard. You're pretty that. young to have it, boy. That's bad, huh? Two. Yeah, well, I had my first one when I was 12, and it didn't work. So, Yeesh. and it was my mom's kidney. But uh, last oh. September 4th, my best friend gave me um, one. So, that's it's been nice. a year. So, that but if good. you would have paid her, it would have been illegal. I'm sorry. Although, I said if you would have paid her, it would have been illegal. Um, that's a guy, actually, right and I didn't pay him. He's my very best friend. <laughs> right. I'm just saying if, okay. Uh, but you can go ahead and sell your eggs. Hey, uh, another thing, when I'm in charge, by the way, this whole kidney thing, it's going, and uh, all, these, uh, all this transplant stuff, it's going to the highest bidder. Huh? I, I could not imagine sitting around on a waiting list waiting for something that I could purchase. I just couldn't imagine it. And people are always like, well, you can't play God. What's wrong with that? You got money, you buy everything else. What do you mean? Fly first class, you drive a better car, you stay in a nicer house. Hell, you got. Hell, you can get bodyguards and stuff. What do you mean? It's a better, safer life when you have money. Of course, that's why you're supposed to work. What, you're supposed to bust your ass so we can go get in line? What is that? I don't understand it. There's plenty of kidneys to go around. It's just people don't want to check that little box at the DMV, and they don't want to give theirs up. So there's a long list, and then people die while they're waiting on the list. But somehow that's better than offering someone who's willing to sell one of theirs for forty grand. I, I don't understand that. And it's all that. It, it, it's always that religious retardism where he's playing God. He's playing God. Listen. That uh, horse has left the barn many years ago. We're now making kids in laboratories. Don't worry about the kidneys. As far as playing the God part, done. For Christ's sake. Those aliens uh, made a kid. Those Raelians, Drew. <laughs> you know, I mean, I remember they came out with the news story about six months ago. I'm sure any second now we're going to see the kid. A very any, any day. Shouldn't someone beat the S out of them, by the way? Yes. Shouldn't we just be able to go back and beat up people who make these crazy claims and then we never hear from them again? I was waiting for the data to come in. Let's beat those Raylands. Annette? Yeah. You're 21? Yeah. What's up? All right, so I've been seeing this guy for about a month now, and we've had sex a couple times, but last week we ended up having sex for about two hours. I uh, thought maybe it was because we had gotten really drunk the night, that night, but um, he told me the next morning that he took some kind of over-the-counter horny goat pill that I guess is supposed to keep his penis up for, like, 
hours. And yeah, my question, what did you call it? Horny goat. I don't know, I don't horny know. goat you, pill. Yeah, some horny goat or big Top Gun. I don't know, some stupid name like that. I guess right. he bought it at some liquor store. Well, let me explain something. Right. He took the pill. He thought it would help his sexual prowess, and, and it did. Because he thought it would. Now, remember I was talking about Drew, who was drinking decaf all night and feeling like he was beaked up and wired? Why, Drew? Suggestible. That's right. Feeble-minded people. Mm, that's another Very way. suggestible. Yes, yes. Where's me? I knew. You see? This pill would not work on my penis. I would give you three minutes tops. I could OD on these pills. You still get three minutes. Well, I don't know what happened, but, I mean, I'm telling you, like, we were at it for, like, 45 minutes, and I was like, all right, it's over. But he kept going and going and going. So what's your question? Yeah, is I mean, what's in these pills? I mean, what you Nothing. He just couldn't, uh, Jack. He just, just couldn't little, climax. A little speed, maybe. Yeah, he just couldn't climax. For whatever reason, medicine, speed, whatever. It wasn't, wasn't the over-the-counter pill, I guarantee you. Really? So, but again, you make an interesting point, which is, uh, as usual, going more than 20, 30 minutes just means ouch to him, and that's all yeah. it means. It's not a good thing. The only over-the-counter medicine that works is booze. <laughs> booze and Tylenol, but booze, but Tylenol because it's got booze in it. Tylenol does not have booze in it. I mean, not Tylenol, NyQuil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Booze and NyQuil. Well now, now, well, now we got Pepsi and we have Allegri. You do. I don't, have any, I don't have any stomach problems. Uh, it pisses me off that uh, all they, they made all this all this uh, leeway in these, uh, in these areas that don't interest me, like <laughs> stomach problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to focus on my stuff. James? Oh, boy. Hello? James, turn your radio down. Uh, turn, your, turn the radio down. Uh-oh. Hi, this is James. Oh, no. It already sounds bogus, That's already trouble. <laughs> you idiot! You're lucky we've been drinking decaf without knowing it. Oh, my bad, bro. I don't have the strength to drop you. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. What's up? Uh, yeah, I got this uh, problem... Like, mm. me and this girl, we've been friends since about, like, seventh grade. And, uh, like, her and I go to college now, and... Is she in the room yeah. there with you? What? Is she in the room with you? Is she sort of in your audience right now? Oh, no, not at all. It's not listening. What? Whatever. All I right. sure hope not. All, all right. right. Go ahead. Yeah. And, uh, so, her and I, we've been to college for, like, two years. And I just didn't know, like, what I should do. Like, her and I are best friends and that kind of stuff going on, you know. And, like, she she hooks up with a lot of guys, but, like, we're still friends, and I didn't know what to do about it. What like, You have not asked a question so far. Yeah. This is well, I mean, what should I, should I do something, or should I just kind of let it go and see what happens from there, or? Let w like, what go? You're being so uh, unclear. Oh, I cannot, because of the decaf, I cannot lift my arms to hang up on James, Drew. Do you understand it's, that? It's torture for all of us. Hold on. I'm going to try. You're going to fart. Hey, wait up, wait up. I don't have the energy to fart, Drew. Do you realize That's that bad. now there's a lawsuit? That's, is your heart beating? No. James. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, the, right. the problem is, is that, I mean, should I do something yeah. with this chick or... Yeah. We're not. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. How do you know her? How'd you meet her? Uh, I met her a long time ago. Sixth, seventh grade. Why is she just your friend? Why have you gone out with her? Too, by yeah, the way, how did you meet her? Long time ago. Uh, neighbors. Neighbors. And how yeah. many years ago? Seven. Okay. And why haven't you dated her before? It just never did. It was kind Why? of like that, you know? Yeah, I understand you it never, never happened. Move. Well, you, you never made a move because she's not interested. She's not interested. Okay. But ask her out. Yeah? Yeah. You guys go in the same junior college? Uh, no. She we, we, go to, we, don't go, we go to Fullerton. Fullerton? Yeah. They make brushes, right? Is that Fuller? That's Fuller. All right, James. Ask her out. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Here's the whole thing. Everybody, please. Especially if you're going to make a bogus call. Have some interest in your own bogus call. Mm -hmm. Show a little, yeah. Go ahead and impress us a little bit. Have a problem. Make something up. Be intriguing. Be interesting. Don't just be sitting there. There's no question to that. But we do talk to a lot of guys who uh, can't pull the trigger with the ladies. And uh, usually they don't want to pull the trigger because they know there's nothing in the gun. 
that uh, it's not going to work. What, what you need to do, though, is ask them out. Yeah. And then when they say no, you can move on. And don't give me that crap about, oh, but we have a friendship and I don't no, want to jeopardize. You don't no. care about that friendship. The reason you have a friendship is you've been pining over it for many years. Yeah, I really, I mean, as an adult, you can do it. As an adult, mm -hmm. you can get married or you can have a girlfriend or they can have a husband or a boyfriend and yep. you can meet somebody at work and you can have some things in common and you can actually strike up a genuine re relationship yep. with a uh, someone of the opposite sex who's an adult. But when you're when you're 14, no way. When you're 17, no way. 22, it's worse. It just, <laughs> yeah. Well, as uh, speaking uh, uh, as a man of uh, great passion like you are, Drew. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean it just it doesn't happen. So you're not worried about the friendship. No. If, if you really thought that there was a zero chance that they would ever date you or be interested in you that way you were ever have, or you would ever have sex with them, they would you wouldn't care if you ever yeah. saw them anyway. That's right. If you ever saw them again. All right. Drew, this, uh, this decaf thing, this is, uh, this is the Titanic in the uh, Hindenburg all yeah. rolled up into one. <laughs> I am wilting now. Yeah. you got to go to the trunk of your car and score something for me. I don't have anything in my trunk. What about but the maybe we can go out and uh, work on some of the leaves or plants out in the back and chew on some coca leaf or something? <laughs> Gotta be something growing out here I can yeah, chew yeah. on. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. Hey, yo. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Been drinking decaf and not knowing it. Now I've wilted, Drew. You feel cheated, don't you? More, Violated. Eh, yeah, it's more of a rape than yeah. it is a cheat. Yeah. Yeah. All my powers of caffeine are gone. I can't <laughs> focus. I can barely move. All right. You're almost there. All right. I'm going to lift my hand and drop it on one of these buttons, all right? And here we go. <sighs> Justine. Yeah. 20. Justine? Yeah. Okay. You want to know my question? We do. Okay. Um, about two months ago, I went to rehab. Hold on a second. Oh, you're able to manage that hold button quite nicely. <sighs> it just hit me. I just uh, surged. But, Drew, I just something very scary just ran through my mind. Yeah. You've been drinking the uh, decaf as well? Yeah. How are you going to punch the microphone? I got I did it earlier. I did it. I, I know, but you usually sock it four or five no, times I'm a sorry. night. I'm well, sorry. It's, it's going to be less. It's, oh, I just... <laughs> I'm, going still. I'm just... Just my pinky. Right? I'm just saying, how? Huh? yeah, that was just a love tap. Yeah, I no, mean, you usually just, sock no, the won't microphone. Happen. Won't happen. No. Although, you know, it could happen. Oh, Adam. Oh, no, no, yeah. Uh, my head will flop over. As you go down. And as I go down. I'll as you fall to the floor in yeah. a uh, unconscious heap, yeah. Yeah, your happen. head may catch it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we can look forward to that. Justine? Yeah. I'm sorry, Hi. you're 20? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, about two months ago, I went to rehab. It was just an outpatient program for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, I was there for weed. And um, about a week into it, I relapsed on meth. Right. I never did anything before that. That was the first time I ever touched any other drug. So um, I went back and did the whole two weeks after that. And I was okay for a while, but then I started getting into drinking instead. And um, now I'm still li living at home, and my parents are wanting to send me to, like, a transitional home. You, you definitely need more structure. you you got to go somewhere. Yeah. You should have gone I, to an inpatient program in the first place. It well, I like tried it. to, and, like, I don't have the coverage, and yeah, I tried insurance. to go back again. Um, oh, that is so effed up. Really? Yeah, that's like, that's I, I wrote a bit, a bunch about that in, in my book about how frustrating it is to get the necessary treatment for people. A lot of people yeah. die because insurance companies won't give them what they need. But um, are you doing weird, you know, relationship stuff too and sexual stuff? Um, no, not right now. I'm trying uh, just to like you, know, get my life. You, you have a history but, of that kind of thing. Oh, of of acting, what kind of act, stuff? Acting out sexually and with relationships. Um. I guess so, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You, need, you need to be in a woman's home. Oh. Yeah. All women, yeah. structure, yeah. at least three months. Rented that. Three what months? What do you, uh, at yeah, least three months. What's, at least. The, what's the transitional home like? It's halfway house. It's a sober living. Yeah, yeah. So All you right. think I should go to one of those types? Very definitely. Or? Very definitely. And and if you have access to more outpatient treatment, I would also do something. Why, why is it called a halfway house? Um, it's, the, it's a halfway between being in a hospital treatment center and the outside world it's mm -hmm. like a step down mm -hmm. 
It's a, it's a dose of treatment prior to entering the, the community. I'm halfway between catatomic and a coma right now. Yeah, right. Halfway. That's where I am. Yeah. Who's talking? Is that you? Probably God right now to you. Is that God? Yeah. Do you have a mission for me? First off, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. you got to understand. You didn't give me much to go off of, and I'm, I'm skeptical. I have a mind of scientists, God. But, uh, he did give me that. He gave you that. Yeah. You gave me that, God. Okay. Where are we going, Drew? I'm seeing spots Four. there. I need caffeine. <laughs> uh, let's talk to uh, Adrian. Yeah, it pro- pro- means you probably went to a bad rehab place when a week into it you get on crank. No, it means she needed a higher level of care. She yeah. needed inpatient treatment and the damn insurance company wouldn't give her what she That's needed. That's right. That's the man. Adrian? Yes. You're 23. What's up? I had a question. Is it normal for me? <laughs> I, it's so hard for me to have an orgasm. Mm-hmm. At 23? With, with intercourse or at all? At all. Yeah, because intercourse, that, that probably never going to happen to you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's pretty free. It be a little different. <laughs> we feel your pain, Adam. We feel it. Okay, we got it. Um, is your husband do oral sex on you? Yeah. And he, does he do it the properly? How does she know? I, mean, she... I assume. <laughs> well, obviously not not quite properly, right? I guess not. Are you on medication? Do you have? Oh, quiet down. Are you on do medication? You... Right now, I am so lost. Okay, well, that's Ooh. why you can't orgasm. Oh, that's bad. But that makes it even before that. I know, but on Zoloft, it makes it almost impossible. How long have you been on Zoloft? Um, probably about a year. Mm-hmm. How's the depression doing? Really good, actually. And orally, he does a good job on you, but no, no orgasm. Nope. And uh, what about by yourself? No, I cannot get into that. I've tried, and I just can't. Mm-hmm. Have you have you never been able to do that by yourself? Mm-mm, never. So you've never had an orgasm. But, in your, I mean, your... Men and women, same, same. There's all kinds of men that feel that way, all kinds. Or they would if society would let them. All right, Drew. I'll, I'll I, I like same. the old decaf, Drew, better. Yeah. Uh, have you uh, never had an orgasm in your entire life then? Um, I have, but she very... She has trouble sometimes. having them, yeah. You, Listen, you just, Drew, what do you got to do with it? What are you having a ticker tape right? I'm just Quiet asking, down. do you want to tell her to, to talk to her doctor about switching medicines? Switch to Serazone or Welbutrin or Remeron. How about that, Adrian? doesn't have the sexual side effects. But doesn't, like, the Welbutrin and stuff, doesn't that make you, like, more tired and stuff? No, actually, Welbutrin speeds you up. Oh, and really? Cerazone, and Serazone does a little, sometimes, too. Jen, why don't you get that, then? Okay, because... All right, there you go. Even before I started taking the medicine? I I understand it's been a problem before, and before you were 22, and it's very common for women under the age of 22, or certainly under the age of 20, to have orgasmic difficulties. And then you go on medicine, that's going to make it impossible. Listen, you're not going to be an orgasm machine. Right. (laughs) No, I know that. There's a bunch of stuff you're not going to do in your life, and you're not going to be the head of the class of um, orgasm you. Okay. Okay? (laughs) It's orgasm Bill. No, it's the head of the class. Oh, I see. Yeah, true. Come on, stop crapping on my stuff. Orgasm, you. you got it. Yeah, got it. Class. Okay, but here's uh, here's the point. You, you can certainly do better than where you're at now by switching the medications. Okay. Right. All right. That's, That's right. what you need to do then. And uh, yeah, I'd, uh, try the tub. Mm-hmm. Tub's got to work. And she didn't say she couldn't have an orgasm. She just said they were tough. Yeah. Which is. Still a little bit ahead of the game, especially if she's on that medication. That's right. Michelle? Yeah. What's up? You 15? Okay. I was wondering how I could go about getting on the pill, like, without my mom taking me in. Call Planned Parenthood. What? Call Planned Parenthood. Huh? Planned Parenthood. 1-800-230-PLAN. P-L-A-N. She doesn't have a plan. And you go and you go get a pill. Have you heard of Planned Parenthood? Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. Never heard of Planned Parenthood. No. Really? Well, that's where young people go to get birth control services. Okay. You got the number? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. Okay. Can you get a <laughs> pen? The world's dumbest call. Well, it's said a thousand like... times. And by the way, I was about to fall out of my chair because for the first time in the nine years I've been doing the show. Oh, Drew. Got it. Punch got the it. mic. Got it. Uh, I'm good. He's back, everybody. The point is, first time in nine years I've been doing the show, I thought somebody actually wrote down a number that you dictated over the air. But of course not. It's impossible. And Drew always loves to shotgun it out. He never does that part where he says, get a pen. He just shotguns it. Are you ready? 
Yeah. No, she's not ready. Do you have a pen? A pencil. All right. You have a pencil? Yeah. Whack it on the phone. Prove it. <laughs> Do it. There it is. Okay. okay. <sighs> Sounds like a number three. 1-800. Okay. 230. Okay. P-L-A-N. P-L-A-N? Like plan. P. P-L-A-N. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so like my age and everything doesn't matter. Uh, over 14, usually you can get things. Oh, really? all right, all right. Yeah. God, love those. Uh, okay, that was it. Is. All right. Here's here's a here's from the New York State law. I have a little initiative here. It says a 14 year old girl wants to get a prescription for the pill. Does she need parental consent? No. No. Birth control pills, like other other forms of contraception, must be made available to minors without parental consent. That's in New York City. Yeah. But what about the I rest of the I country? I think most states are that. Think way. it is. Yeah. Good. Good and progressive. Yeah. It's not something that's widely advertised. But uh, listen, kiddies, uh, if you're young, I mean, here's the problem. I don't want 14 or 15-year-olds on the pill any more than the next guy does, but if it means you're just going to have sex and get pregnant anyway, then I want you on the pill. Right. And a lot of people are hesitant to do it because uh, they think they need their parents to go down there with them. They don't. Just go to that Planned Parenthood, get yourself some free uh, hormones, and uh, then get down. We'll uh, take a break. We'll be right back. Well, that's the show, everybody. I, I've called the ambulance to have you escorted home or, uh, or transported a, home. I, I know you sure as hell need a, drive. Need a helicopter. Yeah. Well, the uh, problem yeah. is, is I Air drive. Lift. I uh, drive a uh, stick, so I won't be. I can't. I got to push the clutch in and move my no hand. Way. It's no not way. No way. All right. We'll get some uh, caffeine in us and be uh, right back tomorrow night. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Doctor Drew saying, Mahalo. I've been trying calling for like a long time. He's gay. Drew. Yeah, yeah. I am. <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.